Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode in our WCW series. It is Monday, week 1 of September 1997. And for those keeping track, it is the two year, two year anniversary of this series. That's right. We started this series two years ago in this game. Now, we're not going to do like a recap episode today, because I just want to get into everything, but it is insane that I have been having this series go on for two years now. Um, switching computers and uh, doing all that other stuff. It has been a it has been a thing for two years now, so I it's it's crazy um, to know that uh, that this is a thing that's been going on. And not only that, but that it's a thing that uh, a lot of you are still watching. Like we're still getting this is still one of the most watched uh, series I have on the channel. So that's awesome. I definitely appreciate all that support. Um, for those who are not aware, uh, as you see there on the screen, um, we have a Twitch channel, and we have started to try to do um, fairly more daily-ish kind of streams. Uh, slight internet issues that I'm trying to fix and deal with, but we're trying to do a lot more frequent streams, so make sure you follow me over there so that you can catch a live stream and, and talk to me and, you know, kind of talk about whatever. Um, I do some TW streams on there. Uh, we've been doing some WrestleQuest recently, which is really fun, uh, which is where you've been seeing the episode that came up the other day. Um, so, we'll kind of, you know, it'll be fun and interesting to, to try to do some other games and stuff on the, on there. But, yeah, it is, uh, it's been awesome um, ever since I kind of restarted or kind of, uh, you know, came back to creating content doing this wcw series doing all that kind of stuff it's been uh it's been a fun ride so but anyway long uh long intro stuff aside it is week one of september in uh in 1997 in game and we are two weeks out from fall brawl 1997 where of course we had that huge huge match that was announced last week by roddy piper as it will be the four horsemen uh versus the NWO inside of War Games. We found out that the fifth member of the Horsemen's team is going to be the United States champion himself, Dean Malenko. And uh, a lot of crazy stuff. A lot of crazy stuff getting ready to happen at that show for sure. But we're going to dive into the show today in front of a sold-out 19,000 people in the Arrowhead Pond. Uh, we actually had to turn people away for this one. Um... We were expected to get like 21,000 people and the next highest arena, the next uh, biggest arena capacity wise after this was like 50 something thousand. I'm like, yeah, I'm not running that. <laughs> so sold out arena here tonight. Everybody's super hyped to go to Nitro in September of 1997. As we get hyped for tonight's matches, of course, we had the challenge issued and it apparently was accepted because tonight it will be Ric Flair and Bret Hart one on one in the main event of Nitro, which is going to be huge, huge time, huge main of a one-on-one uh, -on -one match. We also found out, or we also are finding out here that there's going to be a tag team matchup. It will be the Giant and Chris Jericho teaming up to take on Cactus Jack and a partner of his choosing after the return uh, and attack last week by the Giant on Cactus Jack. We're going to have a tag team matchup to continue stuff there. And also, Remember how it's just been kind of random that Jerry Lynn kept attacking Alex Wright and all that stuff? Well, it turns out he wanted a shot at the Cruiserweight Championship because that is happening here tonight on Nitro as well, as it will be Jerry Lynn challenging Alex Wright for the WCW Cruiserweight Championship. So can the NWO get another get a uh, another championship right now? All they have is just the women's championship, so we'll have to see if they can get another title tonight or if Alex Wright, the young up-and-comer who's kind of helped put the Cruiserweight division on the map over the last... Uh, Many months, if he can retain the belt, we'll have to see. So I got a 74, um, lost heat, I don't care. We'll make up that heat pretty easily. Then, we open up Nitro after the hype video to start off the show. With Gene Oakland in the ring. And he introduces Bam Bam Bigelow and Percy Pringle. And they come out. And uh, Percy is asked about how he feels that Bam Bam Bigelow's back now. And uh, Pringle's like, this, you know, it's great. Like, 
I've got Nomori in the wings over again, ready to take over the women's division. And now I've got Big Low back, the former world champion, who's on a destructive path around here. And, uh, you know, maybe I'm looking out for some more talent and all that. And Okerlund then asks Pringle about Bam Bam's recent attack on Sting. And Pringle says that if you remember all the way back before Bam Bam was taken out for quite some time, um, he was in a match against Sting. And Sting, you know, he wasn't he wasn't thrilled about it. He wanted to go after Sting. But then he got taken out. He he disappeared for a long time. He got injured. And he spent that whole time recovering, focused on trying to take out Sting. He says that it is his goal. He says, yeah, he's been a world champion here in WCW. But he knows that in order to really be cemented as a top star in this company, he has to take out the one who has been labeled the face of this company for so long now. He has to take care of Sting. He has to make sure that Sting suffers, that Sting pays, and Bam Bam Bigelow will destroy Sting at Fall Brawl. 74 rating here. Um, it does kind of, I don't remember if I actually revealed it or not. I think the challenge was issued, but I don't know if it was accepted. But it does get revealed that it will be Bam Bam Bigelow and Sting 101 at Fall Brawl if it wasn't already revealed. I can't remember for sure, but... So there you go. That's going to be a big match up there. Uh, 74 rating expected. That's fine, though. Again, we'll make up that heat. Then after that, before we can get to our opening contest, we find out that there is a backstage brawl happening between Barry Windham and Kurt Henning. Of course, those two men have been having issues recently ever since Kurt Henning was pissed about the fact that Barry Windham defeated him on Nitro about a month ago or so. Um, Henning attacked him, and they had some promo stuff back and forth over Now they're having a backstage brawl with each other. So we'll have to see where things lead there, but security's having to separate the two of them here, which gets a 69 rating. Very nice. Then we have an interview with Jesse James Armstrong, where he is talking about Meng. He says that uh, he wants that one on one match against Meng. Everybody's been telling him, the Armstrong fan, you know, so many people have been telling him, um, so many people have been telling him that he's crazy. They shouldn't go up against Meng. Meng is a goddamn monster. Meng's a, a beast. He's a, mo he's a, you know, just this face of fear, so to speak. He he is unstoppable. There's no reason why I should be going up against him. But you know what? I don't back down from bullies. I don't back down from people who... I don't back down from monsters. I'm not afraid of monsters. I'm the real deal, Jesse James. And I am going to take out Ming. And right when he says this, all of a sudden, Ming comes flying in. Now, thankfully, there was apparently enough security not separating Henning and Wyndham that security was able to get these two separated immediately. Um... Maybe it was more road agents and security at this point for these two. But uh, there wasn't much there. Jesse James got a few strikes in. but uh, So they got a, a couple of shots on each other, but not much as they got separated there. And eventually we're going to have to see that one-on-one -on -one match between these two as well. But this guy is 71. Pretty good stuff there. Got the crowd hotter. Can't complain about that. Then we have our opening contest. That in 12-13 sees Jerry Lynn defeat Alex Wright. By submission with a car cross arm breaker after interference from Ted DiBiase. And we have a new Cruiserweight Champion. Jerry Lynn wins the Cruiserweight Championship. 76 rating here. 83 from Jerry Lynn. Again. He started this series doing like mid to upper 30s in ring performance wise. And we've got him up to an 83 now. That's awesome. 76 rating for the match itself. Uh, 60 from Alex Wright. Suffer from lack of psychology. Eh, probably shouldn't have made it as long as I did, but that's fine. But Alex Wright holding the championship for a few months, having six successful defenses, does end up losing here to Jerry Lynn. Um, and I'm going to guess... No, it's just like psychology. Okay, so it wasn't a big enough match. Because I realized that I didn't actually have a storyline get continued with this. So, um, But there you go. Jerry Lynn wins the Cruiserweight Championship. So... Uh, I mean, he's already booked at Fall Brawl for in the War Games, so I guess Alex Wright won't get his rematch at Fall Brawl, but at some point in the near future, he'll have to try to get a rematch. But there you go. Jerry Lynn is your new Cruiserweight Champion. He's, uh, the NWO now has more championships with him. Um, this was always kind of the... I liked Alex Wright as a champion, but this was always kind of playing all along uh, for a while now because I wanted to... I have a different story direction I'm going to be doing, and hopefully you all will enjoy it, but... I kind of like the idea of Jerry Lynn being the Cruiserweight Champion at the moment, especially for the story I had planned. So, 
But there you go, cruiserweight champion Jerry Lynn, Alex Wright. You know he'll be wanting a rematch. We'll have to see if he can win the title back in this rematch. Uh, and if he can't, we'll have to see what he can do next. I mean, he's still super young, super talented, so we'll have to see what he can do next after that. But this got a 76 rating, which is good stuff there. Then after that, Cactus Jack is being interviewed by Gene Okerlund backstage. And he reveals his tag team partner for tonight. It is none other than the former television champion himself, Brad Armstrong. Of course, obviously, um, some issues there that are kind of obvious because, you know, Brad Armstrong having an issue with Team Canada. And Lance Storm, the current TV champion, who stole, the, who in his mind stole the championship from him. So obviously, being a tag team partner of Cactus Jack in a match featuring Chris Jericho, who is a member of Team Canada as well, is obviously a big deal. Um, Brad Armstrong says that he's gonna take it out. He's gonna take his frustrations out on Chris Jericho, and then at Fall Brawl, he's gonna win back his television championship from Lance Storm. Uh, Cactus says that. He's not surprised that the Giant targeted him. He wasn't. He knew that the Giant was coming back. But the problem is that the Giant did this attack from behind. How is he going to be able to handle facing Cactus Jack from the front? Because Cactus Jack is ready to go hardcore on him. 84 right in here. Gained heat for the TV title. Um, all sorts of positives here. Good stuff there. Um, and yeah. So there you go. Tag team match for tonight. It will be the Giant and Chris Jericho versus Cactus Jack and Brad Armstrong. So that should be an interesting matchup. Then after that, we have a Booker T promo. Uh, this is one of those like pre-taped things. So it's not like Gene Okerlund, you know, was there and then ran backstage for another thing. This was a pre-taped uh, interview with Gene Okerlund and Booker T. Where Booker kind of talks about his issues with Dustin Rhodes recently. He's, He's expressing frustration. He says he had the World Heavyweight Championship in his grasp a couple weeks ago on Nitro. But unfortunately, Dustin Rhodes had to get involved. Dustin has continued to try to be a thorn in his side for weeks now, ever since he turned on him. All he was trying to do was help out Dustin Rhodes all along. He knew that Dustin was getting you know, upset about constantly losing and everything. So he was just trying to help him out. And now Dustin's acting the way he is. And so he will take care of Dustin Rhodes once and for all. Uh, it's not revealed whether they're going to be fighting a fall brawl or not, but he will uh, he will be taking care of him at some point in the near future. This got a 93 rating, which is really good. Um, glad to see that Booker T can be in a promo that gets a 93 rating, even though Gene Oakland probably helped out with it too, but still. Um, gain T for the storyline. Really good stuff to see there. And then afterwards, Dustin Rhodes had a bit of a squash match um, where he defeated a local talent that is uh, Shane Ballard. In 438 by Pinfold Bulldog. This was just Dustin Rhodes looking good. As you see there with the note, Dustin Rhodes looked excellent out there. It was just Dustin Rhodes getting a, a quick, easy victory. Crowd booing him in, uh, while it was happening. Gets 68 rating, which is not bad. Not bad at all there. Then after that, 65 rating for this one. Rocky My Idea was very underwhelming. Which is weird. Because he was rated on entertainment, and he actually has better entertainment skills than everybody else in this match. But whatever. Uh, of course, last week on Nitro, we had Raven and the rest of the flock issue a challenge to these three for Fall Brawl. And uh, Simmons says that he has no problem um, taking on the flock at Fall Brawl. He has no problem doing, you know, proving that he... that. Uh, he has no problem dealing with them. Um, all their creepy stares recently, all their weird, you know, motions and actions and everything like that. He's going, you know, these three, we're going to put a stop to it. And so at Fall Brawl, we gladly accept the six-man tag match. So there you go. 65 rating here. As we will have two cool Scorpio, Ron Simmons, and Rocky Maivia taking on Raven, Al Snow, and Mark at Fall Brawl. Pretty good stuff here. Then after that, tag team action. Sees the Giant and Chris Jericho defeat Cactus Jack and Brad Armstrong in 1427. When Jericho gets Armstrong... No, we're gonna we're not going to say it's by submission. Um, We'll say it's by pinball. Because getting a submission after interference like that is kind of weird. No, I guess... You know what? I guess we can do it by submission. So Jericho gets Brad Armstrong to submit with a line tamer after interference from Insiko Mita, the member of... The manager, member... Of the of Team Canada. I mean, she's still a wrestler, but she's kind of managing the other three as well. Uh, during the matchup, Landstorm did run out and kind of distract Brad. 
kind of showing off the TV title, kind of bragging with it a little bit. Brad was the weak link in this matchup. I kind of expected that. Um, there was kind of a reason I put him in this, obviously because of the Team Canada link, but also just because, you know, he's, I'm kind of treating him as like a mid to upper mid carder right now. Um, and there's a chance that he could be kind of in more into the mid, upper mid card status if I, depending on how he can perform and stuff like this. So maybe this will get him some more popularity and maybe get his entering performance to be a little bit better, but 90 from Jericho, 88 from Giant, 67 from Brad Armstrong, 96 from Cactus Jack. Gains heat for the TV title storyline, advances the Cactus Jack and Giant storyline. Um, Cactus and the Giant at the end of the matchup here were just brawling with each other. They ended up brawling to the back, so it kind of turned into a one-on-one matchup with Jericho and Armstrong, and that's what led to everything happening. 90 rating, though. Really good stuff to see there. Really great match here. We're kind of testing something with... I'm kind of testing on something a little bit with this show, um, which you'll kind of notice as we go on through the rest of the show, but I'll bring it up at the end as well. And then after that, Sting, you know, we go to commercial break, we come back, and Sting comes out. Sting comes out to the ring, he gets a 99 rating, because of course he does. Um, he comes out, and he says that he doesn't believe a word that Percy Pringle had to say earlier tonight about how Bam Bam Bigelow been focusing on Sting for months now, because he knows Bam Bam Bigelow. He knows that the kind of person Bam Bam Bigelow is. Bam Bam Bigelow wasn't focused on Sting the entire time. Bam Bam Bigelow just wanted a target. He just wanted somebody to focus on. He just wanted to make a big impact upon his return to WCW. And so he focused on the Stinger because the Stinger, because Sting himself is, you know, is so popular here in WCW. He's been around, you know, he's like, I've been around here for so long. I've been a top star. I've been a champion, all that kind of stuff. And so Bam Bam didn't want, you know, Bam Bam wasn't focusing on Sting. He just wanted a target, and Sting just happened to be the first person that was in his way. But if he thinks he's going to roll through Sting, if he thinks he's going to roll through me at, at Fall Brawl and just move on from there, he's got another thing coming. Because I am going to make sure that he pays for everything he's done and make sure he realizes that a Stinger is not something you can just walk over, roll over, whatever you want to call it. That Sting is still a force here in WCW, and that I, that he will put Bam Bam Bigelow down with the Scorpion Death Drop and get the victory. Ninety nine rating there, really good stuff there from Sting as he's uh he's in a weird position. Um, peel back the fourth wall a little bit here. He's in a weird position. I've kind of brought it up in a few of videos before. I really like Sting. I obviously really want to keep pushing Sting really hard and everything like that. But it's September of 1997. He's already declined physically. He's already, his, his skills are already starting to go down some. So I don't know how, and it's really weird, obviously, because, you know, in real life, he's still wrestling here in 2023. But I don't know how much longer I'm able to have him to where he can be a top, you know, a top tier caliber athlete, uh, competitor. Obviously, promo wise, he's fantastic. But he's going to start slowly slipping down the main event ladder because at this point he's, you know, in ring wise, he's not doing great and he's getting continuously worse. So I don't know. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to kind of see what happens. But Sting focused on defeating Bam Bam Bigelow at Fall Brawl. Then we get an interview with Dean Malenko, the United States champion, where he talks about, he gets asked by Oakland about being part of War Games. Malenko says he knows, you know, it, it's going to be a hell of a battle. It's going to be a hell of a battle taking on the NWO. But he's been dealing with the NWO for months now at this point. He's one of the few who's been dealing with him since the beginning. And he says that he will do the Horsemen proud and make sure they defeat the NWO inside of War Games. And then Okerlund kind of asked him about Regal specifically, about how Regal continues to want a shot at the United States Championship, um, about how he wants to win it, and then rename it to the United Kingdom Championship, because he's brought that up a couple times in promos. And Malenko says that he, you know, he has nothing against Europe. He has nothing against Europeans and anything like that. But this is the United States Championship for a reason. He's going to make sure he lets, he, he's going to make sure that it stays the United States Championship, and he's going to make sure that whenever that title match ends up happening, whenever Regal decides to stop ducking him and actually have that one-on-one -on -one match with him, that Malenko will retain. 80 rating here, pretty good stuff. 
Then after that, oh, I forgot about Austin's gimmick. I gotta remember to do that. Um, <laughs> Diamond Dallas Page and Steve Austin are backstage again in our weekly what the hell are, you know, what the hell weird odd couple segment here. Page shows up in the Arrowhead Pond. So he brings in some some local brew, brews, local brewski, so to speak, some local beers. And Austin just cracks one open, takes a drink, and is like, what the hell is this? Can Why do you keep bringing me all of this garbage beer? Like, I'm going to drink it because it's alcohol, and, you know, I I like to drink beer. But, like, why do you keep doing this? Paige is like, well, I, 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 I'm just trying to, to show my worth with this tag team. Like, Austin's like, what the hell are you talking about? Page is like, well, you know, I, I know I was like the replacement. I, w- I was the person who you chose to take over for Owen Hart because, you know, Owen got injured. I know that I, you know, wasn't your first pick, but I'm just trying to prove my worth to you. I'm just trying to prove that, I, you know, that that uh, that we can, you know, be the greatest tag team here at WCW and in an entire professional wrestling. And Austin's like, son, I wouldn't have picked you as my tag team partner if I didn't believe in you. I know you've got skills. I know how you are. We've... We haven't crossed paths too much in the past, but we knew, we've when we did, we had hell of battles. I know how you are, and I've seen you in that ring in, the, in our tag team defenses. I know how the hell you are. I wouldn't have picked you if I didn't uh, if I didn't want you as a tag team partner. So get that out of your goddamn head, and we get and next time give me some goddamn better beers. He grabs a six pack that Paige brought in over and just walks off and. Paige ignored like half of it because he just got super excited about the fact that Austin actually somewhat complimented him. And so he's just really happy about this whole thing. So (laughs) it gets so underrated as Paige just continues to try to do this thing where he's trying to, uh, you know, he thinks he needs to earn Austin's respect and all that stuff. And he just found out that, you know, Austin wanted to pick him as the replacement partner. So he's super excited about that. (laughs) Kind of underrating it's it's weird stuff. Um, I have story, I have storyline planned for it. It's just gonna take a little bit to get there, but it's gonna be it's gonna continue to be great. I have a feeling. And then the main event, which got a ninety two rating, uh, probably because of the double count out and probably because the storyline was a little lower on heat, but an exceptional matchup. Bret Hart and Ric Flair go to a double count out. Um, obviously, kind of be expected. These two men, um, yeah, it was the low heat, uh, and probably the length too. Um, but these two men going at it, con- like just right from the opening bell, they are con- brawling with each other. There's no like rest holds. There's no, you know, slowdowns or anything like that. They are just brawling the he- like hell with each other, uh, which is obviously, you know, a little bit different than we expect than we expect to see from Bret Hart. Ric Flair, we've seen get into some brawls in the past, but Bret's, you know, usually more of a technical kind of wrestler. But in this match, he's just going all out. He's just in that brawling state of- status as well. Uh, the two men, and, you know, the two men end up fighting outside of the ring and both men get counted out. 97 from Bret Hart, 92 from Ric Flair. Afterwards, the rest of the NWO come running down, as do the rest of the horsemen. And there's a brawl to end Nitro, which gets an 84 rating, which isn't too bad. Um, I was expecting it to be a little bit worse, honestly, because of I rated everybody in this segment on fighting. And so I figured Waltman's fighting might not be as good. Levesque's fighting might not be as good. Obviously, Bagwell's wasn't as good, which is why you saw him looking dreadful. So, you know, I'll say, also take an 84 for this segment, though, as uh, clearly the NWO and the Horsemen are just brawling with each other. Um, we purposely did Hart and Flair to end in a draw because I do have an eventual rematch planned. It's just not happening yet, but you can expect a rematch between those two in the future. It'll be, it'll be part of a storyline that I have planned. 84 rating for this segment, though. The show itself gets a 95. That might have been one of our be- that might actually have been one of our best shows we've ever had. It increased popularity in 44 regions, so everywhere except for these two Canadian regions and that one British region. That might have been the best show we've ever had. We maybe have had maybe we might we might have had one or two more better, but yeah. Um what I was doing, what I was kind of testing with this, and I, I think I've done it a couple times in the past, but I don't, re- I can't remember. Um, what I was testing with this, uh, it was not our best show, by the way. It was one point off of our best show. We had Bash of the Beach and uh, Nitro in July, both get 96. Um, but what I was testing with this, though, is doing just a couple of matches that were a little bit longer in length. And then doing the rest of promos, as you saw. We only had four matches on the show. 
One of them was a squash match with Dustin Rhodes, which didn't really count. Um, honestly, I threw that on the card because I had like seven or eight minutes I needed to fill. And I'm like, all right, well, let's just get Dustin out there to get a victory. Um, but then the other three, you know, had a decent amount of time. The main had 13. The tag match had 14, I believe. And then the Cruiserweight title had 12. Uh, and then the rest of it was just promos. Uh, and it worked pretty well. It turned out to be one of our best shows we've ever run. So I might be doing that heading forward. I might be kind of, uh, you know, kind of leaving it like that. Where we have just, you know, a couple matches. Because uh, I kind of keep going back and forth on the idea of maybe doing like a bunch of matches that are super short. Like they did in real life. Or doing a couple of matches but doing them longer. And it feels like the ones that, you know, it feels like this show. Having just a couple matches that were really longer did well, well for us. And we were able to do a lot more of angles that were able to kind of advance storylines and, and in many cases actually gain heat for the storylines. Because, you know, a lot of the times with some of these, with a lot of these people, their promo, you know, their promos are better than their in-ring action. Um, so their promos are getting the storylines over more than the, than the matches are. So, you know, we'll have to see what happens. We'll have to see. But yeah, top 100 there. Third best of all time is Nitro. Um... I don't think there was a, I don't know if that tag match was the only, was like the really hot one. Oh, I guess Flair and Brett, I guess the main event got, it was the 18th best there. And with, with that double count, I got a 92. That tag match was like a 90, wasn't it? Let's see if I can find that really quick. Yeah, there it is. It's uh, 29th there at the bottom of this list. I got a 90. So, pretty good stuff there. Um, Attendance-wise. Obviously, our pay-per-views are still more higher attended, but, you know, the 15th overall, we had a, we, you know, if we had had a arena that could have held more, we probably would have beat, it probably would have been our most attended Nitro we've had. Uh, the only reason these Saturday nights are up there, by the way, is because since we taped Saturday night before Monday Nitro now, um, that's why. Uh, TV ratings, look at that. The TV ratings continue to climb. We have our best. <clears throat> we have our best TV rating we've ever had with an 11.49, which is absolutely nuts if you think about it. There is no way ever, 9.2 million viewers, there is no way ever that uh, they would have been hitting that back then, <laughs> even at their highest. I guess there's not really anything that spoils there, but whatever. Put back to that screen anyway. Ratings-wise, fourth of the night, 200,000 behind ER. Raw had an 82. They had 3.7 mil. Uh, they had Shawn Michaels and the Warrior defeating Diesel and Henry O. Godwin in a 93 rated matchup, which is actually pretty good for them. Good stuff to see there. Um, yeah, they had. Uh, well, we have a couple of things. I'll show you real quick. Um, Saturday night happened. Saturday night, I slightly adjusted as well. Um, we're having a few more promos on the show now. That. Uh, are things that you know are higher up than the unimportant stuff uh as you saw you know we had the big lone sting video on that show um so there was that so we had a bischoff interview he was just kind of talk, hyping up war games um we had Miami ozaki with a self-promotion interview with gene oakland then gene oakland interviewed beulah about rob van dam uh, we had a women's match up there which only got a 39 uh if they had popularity it would have been way better because uh, Hikari, uh, and I gotta, I gotta remember to look up these names, but, um, Fukukoa, uh, had like a 51 rating, so the match actually would have been pretty good if, if, uh, it happened that way. But a backstage statement with Reno and Mark, um, we had a, a the Big Low and Stings video, we had an Oakland interviewing James Mitchell about Mang and about the issues with Jesse James Armstrong. Then the main event saw Rikishi Fatu and Samu defeating Big Bob Rogers and Shane Helms, which got a 70, which was really good, honestly. I was kind of surprised when that happened. I was like, oh, here's a match. Um, Rikishi and Samu had like a 60-something uh, performance-wise. Yeah, Rikishi had a 66, Samu had a 63. So, like, pretty decent tag team. Um, the problem is, is I got to keep finding more tag teams because right now the tag team division is kind of a little, a little rough. Uh, we don't have a lot of teams right now. Um, got members of the Horsemen, but they are, you know, they're currently involved in this stuff with the New World Order. We've got Simmons and Maivia that I made as a tag team, um, but they're kind of busy with the flock right now. Sun Impact, but Jericho's kind of 
you know, not doing anything, teaming up with Lance Storm right now. We got the Armstrongs, but you know, they've kind of lost more than they've won at this point. Mayhem Express, which who hasn't who also hasn't done a whole lot recently. Um, you know, the different versions of the odd couple here and then the outlaws. So we don't really have a lot of tag teams. And we also have Rogers and Helms. I just haven't made him an actual tag team in the game yet, but we gotta I gotta try to find a few more tag teams so I can see if I can uh kind of do more stuff there, which I do have plans in the future of having a couple more tag teams form out of it, but we'll see. Um so we looked at Saturday night. Oh, uh last thing I want to look at here is WWF had SummerSlam, which saw Shawn Michaels defeat Scott Hall to retain the WWF Championship in a 99 rated matchup. So, great matchup between those two with the world title on the line, which I thought was kind of interesting. You know, well, like years ago, it was Shawn and it was Shawn and, and Scott Hall, who was then Razor Ramon, having the ladder match at WrestleMania 10, and that was an all-time classic. And then they had the rematch at SummerSlam, which was you know kind of it wasn't as good, but it was what it was. And so it's kind of cool that, like, in this universe, they were able to main event SummerSlam 97 and have a, you know, an incredible matchup for the world title. It was kind of cool to see. Uh, Taker defeated Tatanko by DQ, which got a 98 rating, which is absolutely insane. Uh, Yokozuna retained the final title over um, Ahmed Johnson. Uh, Psycho Sid and Henry O'Godwin defeated Jerry Lawler and the Warrior in a cage match, which was weird. Um, Team Pinnacle... The, Team Pinnacle and Team Midnight just keep trading the tag team titles back and forth to each other. Um, Carl is the or PCO. Um, he's three-time tag, tag champ. Uh, won it twice with Jock before. So I guess he's only had it once. I guess he, he had it once here um, with Wolf ED. But I think there's just been, I think it's just been a lot of like the matches with each other. Like, if we go, let's look at, there we go. So, as you see here, because they're Team Midnight. So, as you see, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, so they've had eight matches with each other in, since March of 97. So they've had eight tag team matches against each other. And that's not counting all these other like six-man tag matches where they were on opposite sides of the, ring, of the ring with each other, but there was other people involved. So it's just like, good lord. Like they're just, they are just teaming up and, and doing a whole thing with each other. Because um, I think... Uh, yeah, so they've won the titles three times. Darso and Max Payne have won the ta have won the tag championships three times uh, since this save started. They won them in October '96, held them to February '97, won them back a month later, held them until June, and then they just won them back at SummerSlam. So it's kind of weird how that's been happening, but you know Barry Darso and uh, or sorry the Repo Man and Max Payne are just killing it apparently. Weird stuff, but you know it is what it is. Uh, Kira Hokuto. Retain the women's championship. She's been killing it for him. She's got an 82 in ring performance. She's been absolutely killing it for them. Her women's division has been looking great. Uh, and yeah, some other stuff happened there. Some pre show matches and all that stuff. So they had six pre show matches, which, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, that's uh, that's them. Um, they also hired Broke Warrior Animal to an exclusive ring contract. They hired Biden nurse Nakamura. We had her for a while. She just really wasn't getting that much better. So I let her go and she ended up signing an exclusive ring deal with WWF now. So, you know, whatever. A couple of people were upset, but so yeah, that's, uh, that's what happened there. We're, uh, we are doing the thing. We are on the road to fall brawl. Now we are, you know, next week will be the go home show and then we'll have fall brawl itself, which will be awesome to see. So, Thank you all for watching, though. Definitely appreciate it. And we will catch you next week for the Go Home Show heading to Fall Brawl.